During my 27-year career at Monsanto as a scientist, I've been reaching out to students, especially young women, to talk about careers in science. So I'm especially excited to be here at this conference to discuss our shared vision of the importance of engaging women in STEM and agriculture. As, if we, as we heard in the panel yesterday, there are many barriers that are keeping our best and brightest um, from pursuing careers in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Just two years ago, under the leadership of Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds and Paul Schickler, and the partnership with STEM Connector, the STEM Food and Ag Council was born and met for the first time at the World Food Prize. We've in, assembled a dream team of leaders representing a wide range of organizations, from private sector food and ag industry, the public sector, higher education, youth organizations, scientific and professional societies, representing incredible breadth across the food and ag ecosystem. I'd like to recognize our members that are here on the stage and their organizations. It's an tr truly an amazing group ready to tackle the complex problems of inspiring youth to pursue careers in food and agriculture. Our vision from the very beginning was to use the breadth of this council to expand the pool of young people interested in solving the challenge that I know we all care so deeply about feeding over 9 billion by 2050. Last year on this stage, we shared our first year's work in our annual report. Consistent with the panel's discussion yesterday, we shared um, our learnings that innovation in STEM disciplines is absolutely required to meet the challenges of feeding 9 billion. We found that the supply and demand the number of STEM jobs in food and ag sector is large, and the number of students in the pipeline is insufficient to meet the demand. There'll be a million jobs in food and agriculture over the next 10 years, and we need to double the number of students in the pipeline. And unlike some perceptions, STEM jobs in food and agriculture are high tech, exciting, and they pay well but young people are not aware of this, especially in underrepresented groups, such as women and minority students. And while our first year's work identified the problem, that's just the first step. And we are now focusing on working together to help find solutions. We're here today, all of us, to share the results of our second year's work and to launch an initiative called Feed nourish, and thrive. This initiative is a way to get the message to young people about the exciting opportunities in STEM careers in food and agriculture. As compelling as the message of these exciting careers is, we know that the messengers and the medium are very important in getting the word out to young people. To this end, what we have done is to utilize the breadth of our member organizations to create over 50 videos. We've utilized our younger employees and students, many of them women and other underrepresented groups, to share their stories about their careers and how they became inspired to devote their professional and academic energies into solving the great challenge of feeding 9 billion. In addition, We've created a web portal around the videos that is age appropriate and most importantly fun, where students, their parents, their teachers can learn about the exciting careers in STEM in food and ag. Our Feed, Nourish, and Thrive initiative is a call to action for all of us to get all hands on deck to bring our best and brightest to these very important problems. So today, we're here to give you a glimpse of what all this is all about. We have a highlight reel that shows you a little bit about um, what is in these 50 videos. 
uh, and in the Feed, Nourish, Thrive online portal. I hope you enjoy it. Right now, we're facing the challenge of feeding the world population of 9 billion people by 2050. That's a great challenge. No one person is going to solve this challenge. That issue, though, excites me, and I think it excites the people and the young people and the classmates that I get to be surrounded by, because we're the ones that are going to solve this. So not only helping to feed the world, but also helping to save lives. My profession really enables me to have the opportunity at connecting people through food. The work that I do is really relevant to the way that people live their everyday lives. So I was a kid from the suburbs and my only exposure to ag was a garden at my school that I actually I didn't even go to that often. But I always had this image that farming was the coolest thing ever. I'm able to do a hands-on activity any time of the day, and I also get that lab experience too. I could blend all the things that I liked from biology, chemistry, into a career that I would like. I love being outside with the plants. I love to see them grow and develop. I would have never thought I'd be in the shoes that I'm in today with a great company. Not only that, working in agriculture, you know, I tell people that if you work in agriculture, I say, yes, I do. I put my boots on on the weekend. I get to work with a diverse group of people. We get to work in a diverse group of places, and we get to really take apart systems, understand them, and then try to replicate them and use them to solve real world problems. I knew that I wanted to incorporate my desire to feed people in whatever I'm doing in my future. So what excites me about my job is really being at the intersection of uh, science and business. I knew that I would have some type of opportunity so that I could have an impact on molding an organization that I felt was very beneficial to society. In my role as an animal geneticist, I believe I'll be able to help producers be more productive, efficient, and sustainable. There are some areas of study and some careers that only affect a certain amount of people, but agriculture affects everyone, every day. Because there's such a great demand for young people to pursue these careers in food and ag, the job is paid pretty well. But more importantly than that, these careers are critical to our future and allow you to make a difference in this world. I look to the future and it's clear that we need continued innovation in the food and ag space to feed and nourish the growing population in a way that preserves our environment. To me, this is the most important challenge of our time. There are careers in agriculture and a lot of them. We aren't fulfilling the demand for all the positions and careers, career options available in agriculture. Thank you, everyone. Um, we, my name is Ted Wells. I work with Brian Jackson at STEM Connector, and we um, have been working on this video and uh, over the last few weeks and this website. And just wanted to share with you the resource that's out there. Remember, this is the beginning. Uh, we've put together a foundation that we want to add on to and that we want to build. We want uh, the experience is going to be right now, we've target, we're targeting three groups. We're targeting high school students. Um, who are often looking at some of our great land-grant universities or community colleges. Um, and we're also looking at uh, college students who are looking at some of our employers or some of our great land-grant universities uh, or our professional societies um, for, uh, for their next step in their, their life and their career. We're also, if we're going to target that younger group, we're looking at parents and educators. Under these three buckets, you'll find resources, and right now the resources consist of uh, a couple things, uh, the videos that Sherry mentioned, as well as uh, you also find career profiles from our partners at Ag Careers. Um, so right now, those are the resources that are up there and there's plenty. The video that you just saw is right there. You can click on it. Um, we also have a dialogue going in social media that we'll talk about in a moment, but the hashtag, and please use it right now, is uh, Feed and Thrive. Um, so these are the, the arrows. Sorry, Brian, you told me that that was going to happen. Um, so the high school students, uh, you can see if you click under people, 
um, all of a sudden you'll be brought into, um, here's a, from DuPont Pioneer, uh, we have uh, Vincent who uh, shares his story about how he came into agriculture and how he came into a career at Pioneer. It's a really inspiring story. All these stories are inspiring. So um, these are great resources. And this is a room we know that is the choir. Uh, uh, this is not a room that's, that, that we're trying to convince that this is a noble uh, undertaking as a career. Um, but we do want ambassadors from time to time that can share these stories. Um, there are also the careers from Ag Careers. Um, you can look at different resources that are available um, and click through. Um, these keep going on beyond F. Um, and you can also look at each of the contributing organizations that have submitted videos. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to our CEO. So I encourage everybody to take a look at feednourishthrive.org. The site is live, or at least it should be. Uh, and uh, the social media campaign and the videos will keep going. Hi there, and I'm Edie Fraser, and I'm with my friend. And this is... I'm Dwight Armstrong with National FFA. And Dwight, we are really proud. And Sherry, come up with us for a minute. Because I think we want to first acknowledge the World Food Prize and Ambassador Quinn, because we've been here for the past two years and we're growing and we're listening, and we're particularly listening to the youth, right? Right, Sherry? Yeah. All right. And what we did was really hear from the youth not to produce major academic reports but to put it into youth language and particularly social media as we built the website and as we built the campaign to make it fun, engaging, and to prove the well-paying careers in food and ag. So I think we want to acknowledge Sherry, you, as chair of our food and ag, we want to acknowledge everyone on stage. And when Sherry said, it's the combination of the major corporations, higher education, government, and nonprofits all working together with the students and with their families, that's what the Food and Ag Council is. And that's the beauty of this new Feed and Thrive campaign. So, Dwight, are we ready for our call to action? You know, I think I would echo that, that this group is, is really committed to help grow the number of young people that have the opportunity to see what a career in STEM and food and agriculture looks like. And we thank the World Food Prize, as, as Edie said, for having us here. But we also need each of you. It's okay to take your phones out. And it's okay to pull out the card. And it's okay to use whatever social media works for you around Feed in Thrive to help us promote this to the young people out there so they can get a better uh, opportunity to see what these careers look like. So your help is greatly appreciated, not only through your company, but young people in the back of the room. Your networks are very important to us in helping spread this word to others that aren't here today as they look for these careers in, in food and ag, and especially in the STEM area, and especially for our young women and, and underserved students that may not know all of the opportunities that are there. Thank you again, and thanks to the World Food Prize. Thank you.